We're delighted to welcome Richard and Joe Davison to the team of Equitop Myoplast brand ambassadors. Richard and Joe are unique in that they represent both dressage and show jumping at the very top level. We've come to their yard in Staffordshire today to find out a little bit more about how they train their horses and find out what is similar about training a dressage horse and a show jumper and what the differences are. Well, we often get asked uh, about the similarity between training uh, top jumpers and dressage horses. Um, and what I think is that we need to be able to influence them and adjust their way of going. So by that, I mean we need to be able to adjust their bodies, their necks, and of course their legs. We need to be able to put them exactly where we want them and at the speeds that we want them. Although dressage and jumping, the, the outward appearance looks very different. We train them from uh, in the, exactly the same way. We, use it, we want to be getting instant responses from our signals and aids and uh, that's what it takes to be successful at Grand Prix dressage and Grand Prix show jumping. When you talk about the outward appearance being different, so you're talking about the, the frame, the outline of the horse when it's jumping is much longer. Yeah. And, and obviously with, with dressage, uh, you know, they carry their necks up more and, and step underneath in a more collected frame. But, but the, the way they're using their muscles is actually very similar, or at least they need the whole range of movement of their muscles. Absolutely, it's been having that flexibility so they're able to use everything that they have. Dressage is slower and jumping is faster. How does that mean they work differently? The dressage horse is more uh, of an endurance type uh, muscular output. I mean, mostly the, they work in an aerobic state, meaning that there's oxygen to the muscles at all times. Whereas that isn't necessarily the case with jumpers, is it? My jumping horses would work anaerobically. Well, they'd use a mixture of both, but they'd also be working anaerobically more than the dressage horses would be. And that is when the cardiovascular system uh, can't meet the demands of the horse's oxygen, and then they'll be looking to use other energy stores uh, such as uh, glucose and uh, glycogen. When you, when you said that the dressage is slower and jumping is faster, I mean, that is absolutely correct because the speeds are much faster in jumping and therefore because the speeds are faster, the heart rate is faster. Not every jumping course the horse is uh, performing anaerobically, are they? I mean, what, what factors can influence that? There's factors uh, which include the, the length of the course and uh, the, the type of class. So if it's a speed and you'll be uh, going faster with the horse, then it's more likely to work in anaerobically. Um, and also if, it, if it's over a number of rounds, so if there, it's a three round um, class, then um, in the second and third round, they're more likely to be working anaerobically. And of course, with combinations especially, and the heights of fences, the bigger the fence, you've got the aspect of uh, the explosive effort in jumping, which you don't have in, in dressage. Um, so, and, and those explosive efforts can put the horse into that. I mean, they, they talk roughly that a horse may be going into that threshold of anaerobic when he's got a heart rate of 150, 170. It's not a precise threshold. With a dressage horse, you know, it's much longer, slower work. A, a Grand Prix dressage test, you know, the, the organiser will allow nine minutes. Well, it doesn't, it's not nine minutes of performing, but if it's six minutes of performing, uh, you know, that's much slower. That's more of an endurance uh, situation. And you're looking with, with horses like that to be uh, using their stabilizing muscles and soft tissue and carrying and holding muscles rather than the muscles used um, you know for uh, going fast. We do for instance with our dressage horses we do canter them because it's good for their cardiovascular you know once a week but with your jumpers you'd do a lot more faster work wouldn't you? With the jumping horses I look to, to be mixing it up with both uh, fast and slow work as, as they have to have a whole range of options to use. I'd be doing more work down the uh, gallops, mixing that in with the, the dressage as well. And of course, you know, in terms of the conditioning for the explosive efforts, I mean, there is no substitute for jumping, jumping small fences and grids and so on, is there? No. So what it really comes down to is building uh, the muscle efficiency and mus muscle size, doesn't it really? 
Yeah, so it'd be like when we go to the gym and lift weights, um, we're subjecting our body to microtrauma and that creates tiny tears in the muscle fibres and the body reacts by sending protein to repair that, the muscle fibres and increase the muscle density so it's, the muscles become bigger and stronger. And of course part of protein are amino acids and the horse can't produce all the amino acids he needs for those protein building blocks by himself. They have to have uh, a certain supply by ingesting it, by being fed the amino acids and, and that's really what prompted us to contact uh, Equitop Myoplast and work together with them because well, really, we're putting all this work into our dressage training and jumping training to build the muscles, but uh, without um, complementing the, the uh, proteins and the amino acids, then we wouldn't be achieving the, the results that we want to achieve. And uh, when we're training horses, it, it goes hand in hand that there's, there's no point doing uh, all this training if they're not uh, getting the required nutrients and things that their bo bodies need to develop. Uh, equally, there's no point uh, feeding all these uh, different uh, nutrients if uh, you're not giving them correct work.